You know, unfortunately for most families <clears throat> who have an alcohol use disorder in their family, one person specifically, it really creates a lot of problems within the family. And the problem is so much emphasis is placed on that particular person, where they are, what are they doing, uh, who are they with, and then maybe you've had to deal with uh, their legal issues, their financial issues, certainly their emotional issues. And it's very draining for the people uh, in that situation. Could be a close friend, but generally it's, it's their family. If it's a son or a daughter, it's very difficult for the parents. Uh, it's just emotionally probably one of the most draining things. And unfortunately, the uniqueness of, a, of having a spouse who has an alcoholic issue, well, you can be legally responsible, financially responsible, certainly. And then on top of that, you become the fall person. You, you, everything falls on your shoulders. You have to pick up the pieces in 90% of the cases. And it's, it, it's uh, nobody's really there to talk about that, talk about what the families go through. And it's equally difficult when the, the alcohol use disorder in your family passes away because of the disease. They eventually succumb to it, certainly in my case. And I talk to people every day. I mean, I spend half the day going, I'm sorry for your loss, sorry for your loss, sorry for your loss on my thread, on my page. And it is very unfortunate, it affects so many people. Uh, and unfortunately, if we were able to talk about it, how it's affecting your family, how it's affecting uh, you know, the alcoholic in your family is affecting everyone around them, it's a very important conversation to have. I know when my wife Amanda died, uh, it took me a long time for the grief to manifest. I don't think I really felt the loss for maybe a year or two later uh, because th there's so much anger and uh, really a lot of animosity at the time of her death. I don't think it was really the, the prevalent. I think the, the most prevalent with me personally was just relief. Uh, it was like somebody hands you your life back. You no longer have to worry about what's going on when you're at work. Uh, I mean, is the house gonna be burnt down kind of thing? Uh, what kind of horrible mess are you gonna have to pick up? What kind of you know argument or stressful insanity are you gonna have to deal with on a regular basis? And if, if this doesn't resonate with you and you've never been in that situation, well, you know, keep scrolling because it, it, it's not gonna make any sense if you don't have, you've never dealt with this particular issue. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, after my wife died, um, I really just uh, really needed to escape. You know, I, I drove, I remember one time I got in my car and drove, I live in Southern California, I drove to Las Vegas. It was just the time that COVID was hitting uh, and nobody was in Las Vegas. I was. There's like three people in the whole hotel. The whole city was closed down. Uh, and then I called some friends up. I drove to Arizona. Uh, I had some friends there and I drove to another part of Arizona. Then I drove home. I ended up flying to see my sister in Florida. Then I met some friends in New York. I went to Atlanta and South, South Carolina. I went to Texas. <laughs> I went back to New York. I went to Maine. I went to Vermont. I went to Philadelphia, uh, Chicago. I, I really just, it was, so nice just to be able to escape uh, and at the time you know I had the means to just take some time off I know a lot of people don't have that uh, you know and my son uh, it affected him greatly as well he was away at school and I, I a lot of people don't understand that but he never saw his mother the last couple of months of his li of her life uh, there was no point pulling him out and he really he had seen her in hospital so many times that it was commonplace a lot of people might see that as callous, but you have to realize there there's, uh, comes a point in families where they've just had enough and it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, not to say it doesn't matter, but there isn't any more that you can take or there isn't any more that you can do as a family member for the alcohol use disorder in your family. And really the whole point of this video is to make families understand that they're not alone that many, many families go through this exact same thing. It could be a spouse, could be your parents, could be a child, could be a cousin, could be a friend, could be a close relative. Uh, and there's a lot of people that go through this. Uh, and it's important to communicate that because there's not a lot of outlets. So much emphasis is always on solving the alcohol use disorder and figuring out the origins of that. Well, the damage is already done. The family's here and they're dealing with it. So again, if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one counseling, some one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, I've certainly helped thousands of families and the alcoholic in their family. Uh, if you want a hands-on, customized kind of format, again, the link is in the bio. 
uh, you know, schedule a breakthrough call. Uh, I'll go over, you know, find out your situation, then we'll go over the coaching program. And again, please like, share, and comment. Uh, we also have a Facebook group called Amanda, a cautionary tale of alcoholism, which has become a very good support group. And again, thanks for listening.